and here we are checking it out once again looking at something cool today and that is the fuel exe 9.7 so as with all fuel exes this is a carbon fiber frame running in around 44 pounds so pretty lightweight for an electric bike obviously the battery is hidden well within the frame there so it's pretty low profile and then a very small motor hidden even behind that very small chainring on the front. Drivetrain wise, we are a full XT here in the back end. So the derailleur and the chain rings are all there cassette wise, which is cool. Runs underneath some protective armor through the bike's frame all the way to the top where we have an SLX shifting unit. So it's going to shift fantastically. Obviously with a minor upgrade, you could get that even more adjustment and texture out of the handlebar portion of it where the shifting actually takes place. But otherwise, no need for upgrades there. On the front end, we have the Fox 36. So this is going to be a really powerful front fork. All air adjustable. Everything's going to perform really well in pretty much any trail and downhill kind of terrain. They have added all blacked out stickers as well to go with this black and gray themed bike. This did keep with most of the Fuel EX uh, styling to it with the frame shape and major geometries of it with a few minor changes. The shock portion of it is tweaked a little bit with a little less adjustment compared to the Fuel EX. But otherwise the Fuel EX -E carries a lot of the same things along with it. Four piston brakes, all Shimano SLX, similar to what you'd get with that Fuel EX 9.7. Obviously being electric, this one has that full console built into the frame, which looks really clean and has a very low profile controller on the handlebar, so you can tell exactly what you're doing. It has a range kind of estimated based on time, and otherwise it tells you a basic amount of information. The charging port is easily accessible and obviously near the bottle cage so you can get that extender battery if you need for future rides. Geometry, like I said, very similar down at that lower shock point. It is not adjustable to fit a coil shock in there, but you do have the mini link adjustment just like the Fuel EX. I assume they got rid of the coil option because of that backup battery placement. Most likely once that backup battery is in, it just won't fit. Now it does have a decent sized battery at 360 watt hours and they estimate for a two to three hours worth of riding. Obviously it all changes depending on conditions, hills, how much effort and what mode you're in. Plus the app itself for all these fuel EXEs is quite impressive where you can control how fast the power is actually applied and how aggressive it's applied. And the combination of those will really vary. But in general, you should get about a two hour ride in and that's what Trek is saying. The TQ harmonic pin ring transmission with a smart charging port is the fancy way of saying it's got an electronic motor which engages very easily, very slowly in a way. It's hard to explain, kind of clutch-like with an automatic kind of CVT style transmission, but it's not a CVT, so don't overthink it that way. That's as much information as I can find on the internet about how this works. Pin ring is very new and it's um, it seems like it's a very efficient way and a very smooth application manner. It's not like a motor spinning a gear, spinning another gear, spinning the chain ring, spinning, you know, it, it actually more harmonizes, like they say, with the pedals. So you are actually in control of it even finer than you ever would have been before with a different style of motor plus it's much smaller obviously compared to the rail series you lose that turbo mode so it's definitely not as aggressive you won't get like a 90 newton meters worth of torque but you're probably getting around that 50 newton meters of torque which is still more than enough to take off the bike for pretty much everyone who's looking for it without it taking over all the power on the front end here we do have that 150 mil fox rhythm 36 fork like i said all blacked out it looks really good has the flow evol air spring so super customizable and the grip dampener so you're able to really dial it in for your body weight and riding style 140 mil in the rear with a fox performance float x and this is just gonna do super well for everything it's potentially even a little bit overkill for this kind of bike i think if it is trail bike you know 
electric, it's hard to say, seems overkill. So you're definitely not getting undersold on that one. Like I said, drivetrain and stuff, perfect. Nothing wrong with that at all. The new geometry on the Fuel EXE, which is mimicking that of the Fuel EX, has been super progressive. It's really lightweight and playful on trails, especially for an e-bike. You know, this one's sitting around 44 pounds. It's going to work really well for anyone who wants a really comfortable, easy riding bike, especially over more technical things. But the head tube angles and seat tube positions are all very, not aggressive, but well placed that you're going to be able to have a lot of control of this bike. It's not going to feel slow and unresponsive. It's actually going to do what you want to do when you want it, while still being that forgiving, easy riding over the down technical stuff which I think a lot of people are really hunting for. It's this fine balance of easy ride, but also not long and slow. Obviously, in downhill bikes, is the easiest thing to go downhill on, but in every other aspect, it's not very efficient getting around a tight technical tree section. And this one, as proven by winning Pink Bikes Bike of the Year, the Trek Fuel EX, it's becoming a very perfect geometry. They are making it very good in technical situations but also in very busy overwhelming terrains and that's where putting it on this electric system on top of it is going to make for a huge increase in ridership i do see the fuel exe level of bike really growing quite rapidly there is going to be a huge blur i feel like e-bikes are going to take over everywhere you're going to have the guys who really just want the regular bikes but then you're going to have the guys who maybe don't have enough time to get out all the time or want to put in 100% effort when they're there. Now they still want to be riding with the regular group. And that's the big difference with these ones. With a regular e-bike, it's really hard to ride as a regular group ride. You will overpower and go way too fast. With the Fuel EXE and the app, you'll be able to customize the motor and the settings to be just enough that you're not at the back of the pack the entire ride, but you're also, more importantly, not three miles ahead on every single climb. This really is what people are looking for in an e-bike, and this really fills in the gap. The 9.7 has an excellent pro spec and is for, honestly, anyone. You can ride this anywhere you want, go anywhere. You're talking downhill parks, climbing up hills instead of taking the things. Like, everything is going to work really, really well. And I think Trek may be onto something here. I think it's going to work really well for most people. And I don't think anyone's going to be let down with any part or ride position or anything about this bike. The 9.8, 9.9, those are going to be interesting ones. Now you're really getting into fancy overkill stuff. It would be interesting to see where they lead. I think for the majority of people who are looking for a high-performance bike but maybe are a, a weekend-only rider or they only get out every couple weekends or they don't have time to continue getting fitter and fitter and fitter, this is going to be an excellent option. Or it's also going to give the opportunity for people who are new into the sport to keep up with the faster guys. It takes away a little bit of the work to get up there. They can run it in a higher mode, and as they get better, they'll probably downpace it. They'll realize they won't need the assistance because they're riding with regular guys not e-bikers. This is what e-bikes were made to be. The power spec on this one is excellent. And I think anyone who is interested in e-bikes should strongly consider looking at this if you fall into that category of still want to ride with regular guys, but just don't have it in you anymore or don't want to have it in you anymore. Either option, you will have a good choice with this one. All right, guys, just a quick little video here. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for watching. Good luck.